I have vintage Neve gear, a couple 1073s, 1084s. Now these are old pieces pulled out of old Neve desks and racked by Brent Avril Enterprises. There's a lot of color, a lot of sauce. I am stoked to have these. But there's also an issue with owning vintage gear. When I purchased these, they were some of the most expensive gear I'd purchased at the time. And now the prices of these has inflated to such a degree that I'm wondering if it makes sense to keep them or not. And I may have a piece that's getting me to think about that even more. So let's talk about it. By the way, this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. I have a session pulled up. And what I want to do is try the Newton on a few of these channels. Now, I have tracked with the Newton and I track all the time, especially with the 1084. It's on just about every vocal that I do. The 1084 is not necessarily on the chopping block. The 1084, I think, is inherently different than the 1073s. Having been lucky enough to work on both on paper the only difference is the high shelf you have a selectable band on the 1084 that is just non-existent on the 1073 it's a fixed band high shelf you have kind of the same thing going on with the newton however this is not a 1073. The Newton does offer a couple things that the 1073s don't. This is a full channel strip. So you have a preamp, an EQ, which we get on the 1073s and 1084, as well as a compressor. The compressor is really interesting. Having used it now in a bunch of different situations, it's slow. You don't have control over the attack time. It's a fixed attack time. And it is slower than like your LA-2 Ace, which you would think of of being like squishy and reacting slow. This is even slower than that on paper. But for what I'm tracking most of the time, I don't use fast outboard compression, I find, in my own workflow. If I want something really, really fast, typically I don't want it colored. So I'm doing that in the box. I thought this would be a good time to look at the differences between this and my 1073s, look at the differences of my 1073s, and see if it's time to part ways, because just by the sale of those 1073s, I could buy a lot of Newton channels. The Newton channel is around $1,800. For what you're getting, a preamp EQ compressor, it's pretty good deal for what it is. I think immediately people are going to put this up against the 1073 of which it is not. The other thing would be the Shelford channel and these are very different. The Shelford channel does have that input transformer. Though I don't have a Shelford, I have used one a long time ago and from what I remember, it was definitely more reminiscent of like a vintage piece where this feels a little more modern and I'm not mad about it. Let's jump into a session. If you want to check out the band, this is Josh Powell. This song is not released yet, but go make sure you follow that band because this will be releasing fairly soon. I have this pulled up on a snare drum. Uh, let's take a listen real quick to the entire song. What I've got going on, on the snare drum here, I have a few channels. If we can just focus right here on the inserts F through J. Uh, there's a little bit of gating going on. I have lo-fi at the end, which I always have, but it's basically like free gain, a little distortion. Regardless of what happens with a snare, I typically always have that at the back end, but so it'll just sit there because that's what I'm used to hearing. So raw, here's what the snare sounds like. Now on the snare itself, there's a little bit of EQ going on, a little bump at 4.8, a little bit of a bump at 12. And here, there's a little bit more low end being pushed into it, but that alone, it feels like a decent spot for the snare for this song. So we're working within the context of this anyway. So let's put a 1073 on here the holy grail of all gear we're gonna go with 1073 number one that's the one on top over here so the very top one is a 1084 followed by 1073 number one 1073 number two you can see little numbers on here so right now the eq is 
either turned off or zeroed out. It is at line level. I'm not adding anything. I'm not taking anything away. Here's what it sounds like without a 1073, and then we will add it. Now with the 1073. Not a lot different, right? In this context, we can push it and push the gain of this thing and obliterate this signal because part of what a 1073 really does well is a distortion profile and you can use it like a fuzz pedal if you want to. The EQ is very sensitive on these things. The problem is number one and number two for me sound very different. Let's take a listen here. Listen to the low end here. Here's 1073 one. And 1073.2. Now we're getting into splitting hairs. I can hear it in this room. There's a lot more bottom end in that second one. That's going to get shaved off in the mix. You're not really going to hear it. But what's frustrating is these are two of the same pieces and they sound very different to me. We'll notice that more the more we get through this. So let's listen to the Newton channel. All right, and the 1084. Big whoop, not a whole lot going on here. Here's where we're gonna start noticing some differences. Let's pull up the Newton. I'll start messing with EQ and then we'll kind of keep going here. Well, I'm not trying to match these per se, but just see what my differences are and if I really like the 1073s more than the Newton for what I typically use these for. Again, I track with these things on drums, on guitars, on bass, all that stuff. I could resell these for an entire bank of Newtons. Let's play with it. So I'm gonna try to carve out this snare a little bit and then we'll go back and see. I'm gonna use the compressor here. Obviously we don't have the benefit of using that on 1073s, but we're gonna use this to our benefit. Wow. So, okay, dialing in, I have a little bit of EQ. I'm boosting a little bit at 16. I'm cutting 700-ish, and I'm boosting right around 150. Um, I'm compressing. Actually, this is a fixed 2 to 1 ratio, so it's not overly aggressive. And remember, the attack is fairly slow, so the transient's going to get through. So that's without it, and let's put all of this back in. It definitely hits harder. And the thing is, I'm looking down here at this number right above my snare. I've only gained half a dB of volume. It is clipping going into this. I don't care. That's kind of what I, I want. But it's only half a dB, and the volume sounds like it's a whole lot more. A lot of that's coming from the compression. It's getting saturated a little bit. There's a lot more weight to it. Let's play with the 1073 here. And 
and back to the Newton. <laughs> Listening to both of them is not pleasing. I like the control I'm getting from having the compressor here. This is a weird video to make. I like <laughs> having something like the Newton as a tool. I'm looking at this not just as adding a channel to my gear, but replacing something that I know really, really well. And these tools are not one for one equals. It's not like I'm trying to find a 1073 clone to beat a 1073. That is not what this thing is. But if the tools are similar enough and how I use them, it's kind of like a one to one to me. So let's try 1073 2 and a 1084. I'm just curious. So here's the Newton one more time. All right, here's 1073 number two. Again, inconsistencies in volume. I have to goose the line input here. Yeah, level matching is gonna be a disaster, folks. I mean, I'm working with vintage stuff here. 1084. I'm gonna go ahead and boost all these five, because even though I am using the compressor and I'm pulling 6 dB down, I'm giving it 6 dB back to kind of equal that out. So I'm gonna give each one of these a 5 dB boost. It's not exact, but it's close. So let's listen to the Newton one more time. Okay, 1073 number one. I like the top end profile on that one, but it feels like there's not a lot of bottom end on that one. That one feels pretty similar. I wonder if I'm just not pushing enough on the high frequency here. Back to the Newton. So the thing you'll get with 1073s is that the EQs are just very, very sensitive. You touch these things and they're gonna move. So let me go, let me go too heavy with like the thing I like out of 1073 2. Let me go too far with it. And then I'll see if I can even match it with the Newton. So that is a very scooped sound. If you're listening on headphones, that is a ton of low end. And I'm, I haven't moved the knobs very much. I could push it around really far. Let's listen to the Newton. So there's not as much throw on the EQ of the Newton. I feel like if I have to throw things that far, I'm probably miking with the wrong mic or I'm doing the wrong source. If I have to push things around that far, I'm typically not doing that on a Neve. One thing I do is balance out the high pass with the low boost and you can get this really cool like phantom bottom end. Check this out. So let's go to 1073.2. I'm going to kind of equal everything else out here. The other thing I'm dealing with is on a 1073, one of my fixed low end bands is 110. On the Newton, it's 150, so slightly higher, but kind of seeing if I can accomplish relatively the same thing here.
kind of pull that high pass up as you just push this a ton of bottom end in. And even if I, so I'm cutting at 80, let's boost at 60 and you can kind of see what this really does. Now, I'm curious if I can do that with my Newton, because I do have a 60 band. So let's crank it. Now, because I've pulled out the gain, I'm losing about 5 dB, so let me try to equal that out. Ten seventy three. here's the Newton. It still does the thing, man. I mean, there's not as much low-end sensitivity here as the 1073. The thing, I feel like one place I'm really going to notice that is bass. Let's move on over. Let's just bring all our friends here. So I just moved over the Newton and the 1073 to bass, and let's take a listen. It's a Newton, here's 1073. So right off the bat, let's see what we can do with the low end here. See what I mean about a fuzz pedal on these things? Part of the cool thing with the 1073 is duplicating the track and just running a distortion through this thing. The low end is a little cleaner on 1073s. Let's listen to the distortion profile. They break up awfully similar, I will say that. That is good to know and definitely useful. I haven't taken advantage of the fact that I have a compressor here. Then I could really pin this thing down if I want. That's cool. One thing to note with this is there is a, a 0 dB out and a minus 6 dB output on this unit. So if you want to break up more in the box before you hit your converters, you can do that. I have this at Unity so that I don't have to worry about like level matching these two things because I'm looking at 1073 versus this. The compressor offers a lot of control. Let's go back to no nothing on the base here. It's thick. Join the spirit way. Like if you're listening to the bass, that feels good in context. And I hope you're on headphones because you wouldn't hear this otherwise. But if we solo this, it's going to be a distorted mess. One more time in context and then I'll solo it. That's obviously an exaggeration, but sometimes that's how I'm using the 1073s. It's cool to know I can still do that. And I can't really do that with just the pre and the EQ because I feel like it breaks up differently. But adding that compressor, I feel like I get really close just because it's controlling the low end. And then I can push a little harder, but pull back. I am using the silk too. I'm using all the tools at my disposal here to try to see what's happening with the Newton. So I am using that kind of low end content. Let's see what it does without it though. Here, let's get it cleaner and then we'll see what silk is doing. It's just that 
subharmonic stuff that you get used to on a Neve. I have it on my MBP all the time. It's basically always in blue mode, so very cool. The other spot to use this is vocal. Let's head on over. The other thing to think about too, there are line inputs on each one of my 1073s. There is not a line input on the Newton, which is okay. I set the mic gain to zero. There's not a dedicated line. I do wish there was a dedicated line. Not that I think it would be an issue, but I don't want to accidentally put 48 volts back into one of my lines. Something I can easily work around, something I've trained myself to always look at phantom power just in case I'm plugging in a ribbon mic somewhere. So that is something that I'm aware of. I do wish it had a dedicated line input, but it's an easy workaround for me. Let's listen to a vocal here. Uh, zero this out again. You know. The silk is cool. So let's zero out 1073.2. I keep using 1073.2 because it's my favorite one that I have. You know. So let's start tweaking with the Newton. You know. Punk. Let me hit say. Okay, I'm interested to see what this does in context now. Here's without the Newton. With the Newton. So much more presence. So let me kind of dial this guy in. This is where I think this is going to tell me a whole lot about how I work and how I can incorporate the Newton. Um, a lot of times having this at the very back end of my channel does a whole lot for me. The EQ is something that I know really, really well. It just has a way of pushing that voice forward. Uh, regardless of what you're doing on the EQ, it is just a monster. And now having the Newton with the ability to shave off a couple more dB that is frankly fairly transparent, albeit it's not fast. I don't want anything fast right here. It's not doing a ton of heavy lifting, but what it is doing is allowing me to push into it and poke right through. That's what she said. <laughs> you know Now the bummer is, I wish this was back on snare, because I really miss this on snare now. Ah, oh, yeah, that sounds so good on snare. Okay, uh, one thing we didn't try was kick. Wow, I had just been equaling everything out to get back to zero on the kick and just engaging the silk on this thing. Check this out, here's without. 
and with silk. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, so it's killer on kick. This having the silk is super handy on like percussive instruments, I find. And back to the vocal to see if I can do like my distorted vocal thing. Let's do it with the 1073. So right there is that's a quick dial in of like a distorted vocal that you can just push through uh, by itself. It sounds gross, but in context, it pops that vocal right out. So that's adding a lot of spice. Let's see what we can do with the Newton here. You know. Interesting. What this makes me want to do is duplicate and try to run this parallel. So I have automation written to this track, so I'm going to add a trim plugin and use that to fade this in here. So completely dry, and then I'm going to bring in a crazy distorted thing right beside it. You know because I need to time align this. <laughs> Just an interesting way to use this. The distortion profile is, it's different. It is different, but it's in the same realm here. We don't have an input transformer, so we're not gonna hit that very hard. But a lot of times that's not how I'm pushing into it. I'm normally pushing out of it really hard. Either way, a cool little unit. I have tracked with it a lot. It is really killer on snare. It is super handy to have on vocals. And to just use one U, not take up another space of a compressor, it's an exciting little piece to have. The issue that I'm having is it's really making me question, is it worth it to keep some of these other pieces? Again, this is not a 1073. It's not trying to be a 1073. It's not gonna act like a 1073. But if the ways that I'm using it can kind of be the same and I can get away from these 1073s, still have a killer mic pre, still have a killer EQ and have a compressor, that's not a super precise compressor, but it's a problem solver. And when vocal tracking, that's kind of what I'm using it for. The silk knobs on this thing make it immediately versatile for kicks, snares on that red silk. That little extra aggression on the top end pokes right through. The blue, what I always use on my mix bus with my Portico 2, it is never turned off. Having that on a per channel basis on like bass guitar, is really cool. I'm really contemplating selling my 1073s and getting a bank of these because I could get pretty close mix ready stuff that I don't have to touch just with this channel. Again, this is not a Shelford. This is not a 1073. This is something completely its own. The way I've kind of thought about this is if the 1073, which is a killer piece. It has been redone and remade a hundred thousand times. Looking at an old actual one, there's even issues here because they're, they're not gonna act the same way. As they age, they get temperamental, they need fixed. Then finding parts to live within the tolerances of those original pieces becomes even more difficult. Having something predictable, something replicatable, now that I know what I like out of a 1073 is definitely appealing. And this is a cool little piece with a whole lot of versatility at a relatively cheap price for what we're talking about. $1,800, that is, that's a lot of money. But when you're looking at it against the resale value of these other pieces, I could literally buy an entire rack of them. If you're looking for something a little more modern than a 1073, if you find yourself doing a whole lot of vocals, a lot of guitars, drums. I mean, Neve is all over so many famous records. I mean, 
The 1073 into like a tube tech CL1, that is the sound of so many hits on a vocal chain perspective. I feel like I keep beating a dead horse. The only problem with having these 1073s is when they go down, they really go down. And I can tell you, I have almost purchased a whole Newton channel for one time getting one of these serviced. Do I miss the input channel? I don't think so. For what I typically use this for, I don't mind getting that extra transient information. I've been input transformers for so long. So much of my stuff has input transformers, output transformers. I have a lot of iron all over the place. And now having something that is slightly colored, but doesn't have that iron in the front, I'm getting like a different transient profile out of it. I like that color. I like to hit something, but maybe my taste is changing. <laughs> If you'd like to check out the Newton channel, I'll put links down in the description below. It will be an affiliate link. It does support the channel. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you guys in the next one.